Good morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, good morning, everyone. And we will get started here in just a moment or two. This is Sister Billy Jean Bishop with uh, Partners in Prayer. And we are doing 90 days of prayer for our prodigals. We started last Thursday and we're on day six. We go Monday through Friday and we do a prayer conference call simultaneously. Uh, while we're on Facebook Live, we are um, on a conference call. So I do appreciate those of you, except for my guest, uh, Sister Marion, uh, to, to mute your phones on the conference line. Um, and then we will uh, get started. Um, so if you would mute your own line, it does help me. Um, praise the Lord. Thank you for those of you. Uh, give me thumbs up if you can hear me well on the line. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, it is 10.03. It's time to get started. Welcome, welcome, Sister Janet and others on Facebook Live. Welcome, Sister Chestnut and Sister Marion, my guest today. I have a testimony to share with her. She has to share with us, rather, and I'm excited about it. Sister Charlene, welcome, Sister Mary. We'll just give another minute or two for folks to get on online. And I am doing live audio from Leesville, Louisiana. And uh, I welcome you. Again, this is Sister Billie Jean Bishop. Welcome, Rita and Alicia. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want you to miss this great testimony, so I'm going to give it a minute to to get folks online. Would you mind sharing this with your page? Just hit the share button and we want as many as possible to join us today. Uh, today is day six of our 90 days of prayer journey and we welcome you. We welcome you. Thank you Jesus. I'm going to give today's focus uh, and then I'm going to introduce my guest uh, from Arkansas, Sister Marion, and then she's going to share a powerful testimony. So I thank the Lord for all of you that have gathered in. Okay, we are ready to get started. Lord, I ask you, God, that you would be with us this next hour. I pray in the name of Jesus that your presence would permeate our hearts and our minds, that there would be a word given that will carry us, that faith, the gift of faith, apostolic gift of faith, will be loosed and released in the uh, favor of God. Lord, that we would believe you, Jesus, for the return of our prodigals, because it's already happening. God, you've done the marvelous, the magnificent. Lord, you have touched hearts and drawn and broken darkness away from those that have been bound. You have brought sons and daughters home already, Lord. And we give you praise and glory. Our focus, our attention is on you and you alone today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. All right, if you can hear me well on the call and on Facebook Live. Today's uh, subject is called On Your Shoulders, On Your Shoulders. I am the, the oldest of four girls. Uh, we are now the old silver-haired aunties. <laughs> We've lost many of our, our elders in our family, and uh, I'm 65 years young, and a lot of our nieces and nephews, they call me Auntie, Auntie Billie Jean, and uh, when I was carried on my father's shoulders, I can still remember. He loved to wrestle with us. We're four little girls, all just a year apart. And those were days that um, I remember the love of, of my father. My father was uh, born again of the water and the spirit. He repented after my mom and I did and was filled with the Holy Ghost at age 52, and he's gone on now to be with the Lord. I have much uh, more to go to heaven for, and to join my mother and father in eternity in worshiping God. But as a daughter, there's nothing more comforting than a good father, a good earthly father that says, come here, let me dry your tears, uh, come, come sit in my lap, and the Lord is a good father. And on day six, he is telling us that uh, we can put everything upon him, to cast our cares upon him. Our prodigals, uh, we need to 
in our heart and in our faith and in, in our mind's eye, if I could say, use that term, our mind's eye, we need to physically pick up our children and carry them to the feet of Jesus. And the Lord knows right where they are, and he will bear them up like a good shepherd. The scripture that opens day six, if you've got your book, 90 Days of Prayer for Prodigals, it's found in Psalms 140 and verse 7. And if somebody wants to type in Psalms 140 and verse 7, what a powerful scripture this is. The scripture is, O Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer. And you can read the rest of Psalms 140 and 7. And I'm going to use the words of Sister Diane Long. She is over our Hope Ministries. We have partnered with her from the Pentecostals of Alexandria. And there is power in unity. And there's power in numbers. Many intercessors, even across the seas, have joined us in this 90 days of prayer. And in today's devotion, she wrote from this scripture, and I'm using her words. Because you are my heavenly Father, and you are in me and always with me, in me and always with me, I feel taller, stronger, and able to face anything because of your fatherly love i know that you are carrying my beloved prodigal all of our beloved prodigals on your powerful shoulders now what an image that your mind can take sometimes you need to expand your mind to see those things that are not as if they were do you know that your imagination and the word and promises of God, these are my own words, can help you to see the end result. And God wants us to visualize and focus and dance in advance. But I want you to visualize your the love of the Father, Him carrying your son or your daughter, carrying them on their shoulders. Your word says, Sister Diane goes on to continue, your power is made perfect in weakness. And that's found in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Uh, you also are carrying me. Last hour we talked about cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. Be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and with faith. Bring your uh, petitions to the Lord. and He, he will carry us. He carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. There is a song. Look it up today. Add to your faith. Give, give uh, force and strength to the faith that you have for your beloved prodigal to return. Diane goes on to, re to write, As our prodigals search for joy and happiness in other places. Now we know they're searching in other places. It's evident by their choices. Her prayer was, let them come to understand. See, it's the battle of the mind. Let them come to understand. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. Psalms 62 and 1. Lord, we pray. Sister Diane is leading us in prayer in her written post today. We pray that you will bring them back to your house, for when they are home to you, they will be home to us. Simple but profound, powerful words. When they are home to you, Jesus, they're home to us. We thank you in advance for that glorious day, that glorious hope. So I opened with Psalms 140 and verse 7. The Lord's going to pick them up and carry them. Remember holding your children when they were small. Those of you that have uh, prodigal children, remember teaching them the Sunday school songs, This Little Light of Mine. Remember taking them to the house of God. Remember their sweet innocence when they would re repeat, repeat, excuse me, repeat back to you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Remember those precious times. The Lord... Uh, sees them as children he sees us as his children and we need to have confidence that God is carrying them God carried you as a father carries his son you can look that up in Deuteronomy 1 and 31 
Father, our prodigals need you to carry them now. How many of you have prodigals that are stumbling? They, the weight of this world, the weight of addiction, the weight of broken relationships, the weight of their own sin and mistakes are weighing them down and they need the Lord to carry them. The author, Dr. Banks, says, and we focus on the devotion before we pray because it builds our faith. And he says, Dr. Banks writes in his book, I pray he will recognize his own limitations and understand his need for you. Do you understand your need for God? Your prodigal needs to understand. So pray that prayer. Give him grace to understand how his power is made. Your power, God, is made perfect in weakness. Um, let him hear you say, and I love this scripture because um, I do have gray hair, silver hair. Even to your old age and gray hairs, the word of God says, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. Some of you need to be reminded today that God is carrying you. He's carrying your prodigals. And he is lifting them up out of the miry clay, lifting them out of the pit, lifting them out of the pig pen. He is lifting. He's the lifter. He's the lifter. He, he is the one that carries us. Because you, God, are strong and because you, O Lord, are loving, the author goes on to say, uh, that we thank you, Lord, that you will move in our prodigal's lives and you will, you will answer the prayer. I long for my son to spend time with you, O God, and to discover the comfort that you give to those who love you. We look forward to the day that their soul will find rest in God alone and that their salvation comes from you. Praise the Lord. The Lord promises us as I close out this devotion that he carries us as eagle's wings. He, he's, he's come to us to bear us up. Even though we're in a wilderness, even though our prodigals are in a wilderness, he, he carries us. He tells us to wait so that we can be lifted up as wings, as an eagle. Lifted up so we can see from God's perspective. And so that our prodigals can see the face of Jesus. We do look forward to the day that you will lift up our, our backsliders' heads. Oh, what a wonderful day that is going to to be what a wonderful day and if you're a backslider and you're listening the lord has his arms open to you he says come under my wing come under my wing and i will cover you i will carry you now sister um marion has a powerful testimony of that very thing and she is from Arkansas. She has a powerful ministry. I've been connected with Sister Marion uh, for, I don't know, a couple years now, Sister Marion. And uh, I want her to introduce herself. She's a widow, I will say that about her. But she is a impassioned intercessor. She has a ministry where they make blankets and they carry them to people upon request. Those blankets have been anointed and prayed for. And I just shared on our page about a blanket they took to a man incarcerated, a prodigal, a backslider. And uh, I'll let her, I don't want to take her testimony. But her testimony today is about her own son. So I'm going to turn the time over to her and uh, let her testify on day six about the Lord carrying and being her son strong, deliver. Go ahead, Sister Marion. Thank you, Sister Billie Jean. I tell you, it's an honor. It's an honor to be able to share my son's testimony today. Um, it's something that probably very few people have seen. Um, but this started, my son, let me say, is a very good person. Uh, he has a, a business that he was just uh, really involved in his business uh, and began to uh, let that take precedence over uh, church and God and that type thing. Although he's a very good son, taking care of his mom and just couldn't ask for anything any better. But God has other plans, and uh, it was on March the 9th 
in the afternoon um, that I received a call. I had just gotten into my home, and I just sat down in my recliner, and I received a phone call from my daughter, and she said, Mom, Kevin has passed out at his business, and um, I'm about three minutes from there, and I jumped in my car, and I took off there, and when I got there, uh, my son-in-law, who works for him, had called my daughter, and uh, he had backed up out of the way. For some reason, he couldn't handle what he was seeing, but when I drove up, got out, and went to where my son was, he was in his truck. He had fallen over. The window was partially down. He had fallen over. His head was on the window. He had turned a really dark gray, and his tongue was extended out of his mouth, and I knew that he was dead. I knew he was dead. I knew he was dead. And all I could do was just start screaming to God. And I, I was doing everything I could do to try to get God's attention. And I screamed and I screamed. And people began to stop by. And the, here comes the first responders. Here comes the ambulance. People are coming by. They're grabbing me. They're consoling me. And I just kept screaming to God. I could not let go. I couldn't let go. I just had to have my son. Uh, he is my rock right now, you know. But anyway, um, in the process of time, they got him out of the truck. They began to work on him. And uh, we had a minister there, an apostolic minister had, that had come by, and he said, uh, Sister Wright, if you had not uh, been screaming and praying so hard, I don't think they would have worked so hard. But he said they continued to work, and they they gave themselves out, but it came in my mind during the time that I'm screaming and praying to run and grab my bottle of oil that I use in my prayer blanket ministry. It was in my car. I ran and I grabbed my bottle of oil and I just opened it and I ran down to where he was. And I can, I can tell you now, every bit of this was planned by God long before it ever happened because there was a straight path of all the people working on my son there was a straight path i ran straight to him i remember reaching down and rubbing his head with my hand with that oil and as i rubbed his face i just turned around and i rubbed back i ran back and as i ran back i was still praying and screaming and the minister comes to where we are others are with me trying to console me and he said keep playing they've got a faint heartbeat <laughs> and he said and they've got a faint pulse Jesus. it ended up that they took him to the hospital he died twice on the way to the hospital they shocked his heart back i found this out later as i'm in two days later as i'm there in icu i begin to hear the story it all comes to me but he came in doa into the hospital he was listed as dead on arrival at the hospital i didn't know this until the following morning when my daughter-in-law got the call and we're sitting there in icu patiently waiting and just waiting for god to just Keep him alive. Just keep him alive, Jesus. But anyway, my daughter-in-law was called down into the office where they're uh, doing paperwork, and the lady at the desk said, I need to ask you some questions. She began to ask my daughter-in-law questions about my son, and she said, I don't know. I will need to ask him those questions. And she said, but your son's dead. And the lady at the, at, sitting there at the, at the office seat, she said, no, he's dead. He's, he, my son, she said, my son is, my husband is in ICU. And the lady said, no, he's dead. He's listed right here as being dead. She said, no, no, ma'am, he's in ICU. And the lady working on the paperwork, she said, oh, I've got to meet this man. But to make a longer story shorter, um, there were ministers there of, of different faiths. The coroner was leaning over my son when I rubbed the oil on his face. The coroner gets up, and he begins, we're on the way to the hospital, I don't even know this. And then he begins to text everybody he knows, I just saw God. I just saw God. <laughs> God brought my son back up. <laughs> and he's still alive today. He's been out in his truck. I've been riding with him, and God's got a great ministry for my son but i want to tell you all one thing there's nothing that god cannot do right. if we will align ourselves with god yes. if we will keep 
our hearts clean and pure. And if we would just live for God, he's the only thing. Sister Bishop, let me tell you this. Six months ago, I sent all of my children's names into you. Yes. And I knew I knew their names were going into these jars. And I sent those names in. And I was praying with the heaviest burden I've ever had in my whole life. And nothing mattered except my family, my family. And right now in this town where all of this happened, there is a revival of the Baptist people, the Church of God people, <laughs> the Assembly of God people. We are coming together in one mind and one accord. I'm telling you, <laughs> we are having revival in our town. And I'm so thankful to my God. Thank you, Sister Billy G, for letting me share this testimony. Oh, sis, I, I have purposely invited you here today to build faith. I have shared with those that have been following us since last Thursday that we're going to weave testimonies in with our teaching to build faith. Do you understand what she just said? She just said that her son died, not just once, but twice, that the coroner had declared him dead, that the hospital thought he was dead. And we think sometimes that our prodigals are dead in their faith. But I want you and I, and I'm reminding myself today, that the Lord God is their deliverer. He is raising the dead. It's not happening in far away countries. God is raising the dead. Did you hear her say her city is on fire with revival because the Lord raised her son from the dead? March the 9th, Sister uh, Marion? March the 9th. That's just been a, a, a month ago that God raised a man from the dead in Arkansas. And God is doing a great work. Now, I understand that your um Tell us a little bit about your son. And I know you're a widow um, uh, and your children. Go ahead. Share with us. Uh, well, my son, uh, he is a songwriter. Uh, most people around POA will know Madonna Massey. Uh, my son's name is Kevin Wright. He's written uh, several songs that Madonna sings, and she happens to be a really good friend of our family. And uh, he had some songs that he had written, and he was getting ready to go to Nashville and do a new project. Uh, he had already made some phone calls, and then this happened. But uh, we believe, I believe with all my heart, God was putting him back on track. My other children, they're really good children, and they were all in church Easter Sunday. My sister, all of these people, I sent their names in. My sister was in church, grabbed me by the neck and hugging me. Marion, we can't lose our family. We got to all get to heaven. My children are all with me. Uh, Mom, look what God is doing, and they're standing up with me in the faith. And I, I get, I got a scripture just this morning from one of my daughters. Uh, God has put revival in my family exactly more than I asked God to do. More. I didn't, I didn't dream of all of this, but I asked Him for my family. But it's gone outside my family, and God has worked in ways that I never even, and by, the Bible says he can do that, and we just got to get down there, and we got to pray, and we got to trust God, and watch him, and let me tell you, sometimes it don't come overnight, mm -hmm. it's, it's something where we live on our knees, but let me tell you, there's been times in my life, I've ne God has never failed me, I'm down there uh, with a purpose. I have a purpose in my heart, and when I'm down there, it took maybe like six months for this to happen, but it, it did happen, and, and I don't know what God's going to do from here, but I do know this. It's not going to be just us. There's a whole bunch of people involved in this, and my desire is to take everybody to heaven with me that I can take with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, do, do you sense the faith that has risen in her heart? Now, I want you to know that Sister Marion is is a, a faithful woman of God. She has a blanket ministry, and I want her now, because we're building faith. We're building something. We're building something where we can come approach God and pray today. Her names of her prodigals were put in the jar our last 90 days. And their names have been prayed for over and over through the years. Sister Marion is a widow. And God has given her a ministry. And she can share that. You want to connect with this woman a prayer. 
but I want you to talk, tell us about the man you visited in jail recently and his testimony. Wow, it, it is so, it so fired up my heart. I was just like, yes, Jesus. Go ahead and share that a little bit with us. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I was sitting here at my house and, um, we had snow, the largest snow we'd had in ages, and I was just sitting here doing nothing, and my phone rang, and it was the jailer, uh, the main jailer from uh, uh, a town close to us uh, that had called, and he said, um, I've got a man here in my jail that don't need to be in jail. He said he's a good man, and he's here and don't need to be here. And uh, he began to tell me the man's story, the man had at once been in church. Uh, he had lost his wife. He had lost a son. He had lost somebody else in the family. And in the process of losing all of these people, he just kind of got uh, uh, tired of, of God and I guess a little bit uh, upset with God. And anyway, he got away from God. And uh, he began to get on uh, medication and things like that. Well, he had an altercation with someone in the family that was serious enough that he was put in jail and he was, uh, he was supposed, he was looking at prison terms. And the jailer said, Marion, he does not need to be here. I need you to come and bring him a prayer blanket. And uh, so I'm thinking, oh my goodness gracious, you know. So uh, on Sunday, that was on a Wednesday, on Sunday, the road cleared enough, and I called the lady that uh, lives in that town. Her her brother pastors the church there where Carlos, who was the prisoner, used to go to church. And I called her to get her to come there and meet with me and help me pray for Carlos. So when I got to the jail on that Sunday, uh, I went in, and there was Wendell Pritchett. He was the main jailer there that had called me. I'd never been in a jail before, and it felt really strange to me. Melissa was there. Melissa worked there. She's a court clerk there at the courthouse where the jailhouse is. So we went in, and the jailer went down to the cell and got Carlos, brought him out. He comes out. He's got handcuffs and everything, you know, and they bring him into the courtroom, and they sit him down. And uh, I looked at this man, and I've got this prayer blanket in my hand. And I, I began to explain to him about the prayer blanket and uh, all of the things how it had been prayed over, a lot of the things that I had witnessed that God had done. We've had people healed from cancer. We've had all kinds of things happen through our ministry. And anyway, I took out my little bottle of oil. I gave it to the, the jailer. We passed it around. We put our hands on his head, and we prayed for him. And I'm telling you now, I felt it. I felt it. And I told him, I said, let me tell you something, Carlos. God's about to turn this thing around. You're not going to be here forever. God is going to turn every bit of this around. I just felt it in my heart to tell him that. And I, I knew he needed to be encouraged. Well, the jailer called us later that afternoon, and he said on the way back to the cell, he was singing. <laughs> and he was kind of just hopping and skipping on his way back to the cell. This man was suicidal. He was suicidal, and that was one reason that they were all worried about him. But anyway, he's happy going back to the cell. He's happy. And then they made him, uh, they let him come in, begin to cook in the kitchen, begin to clean the jail. Three or four days later, he's in there just doing all kinds of stuff. He's happy as he can be. To make a longer story short, he's out of, he's out of uh, the jail. He's been going back to church. He's prayed back through to the Holy Ghost. And he's doing wonderful. I was in church with him last Sunday. And the jailer, the head jailer, says, Marion, I want that book of Acts experience. And I'm working with him. And I'm telling you right now, there's nothing that God cannot do. And there's nothing he cannot do. We just got to we gotta pray and we got to believe that God can do it. And I'm telling you, he can do anything that we ask him to do. Nothing is too hard for God. Amen. Those of you that are just tuning in on Facebook Live and just dialing in on the prayer conference, we just heard a testimony the last two months of her son being raised from the dead and God sparing his life and drawing him and renewing his faith. And I, I can't imagine what God's going to do with Kevin from this point. I can't imagine the song, Sister Marion, that Kevin's going to write. 
from this experience. You talk about when Carmen wrote the song, Lazarus, come forth. He's going to be able to write that song. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that he writes that song. And that everyone that is facing death, everyone that is facing disease, everyone that is facing uh, a prodigal's return would hear his song. Kevin needs to write a song in the name of Jesus. And this man is backslider in jail. God sends a widow. It sounds like a Bible story. God sends a widow with a blanket that she's sewn herself and made and had women anoint the power of a woman's prayers. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is shaking us, waking us up. Marion, when you got up that morning, when your son uh, collapsed, you never knew you were going to be called to as an EMT, an emergency worker. You were going to anoint your own son with oil and God is going to bring him back from death to door. What a mighty God. I want this to sink into everyone that's listening. When you sing that song, you need to find it. You need to go to the internet and type in the song Dry Bones. There's another song that's called Let God Roar. Let God roar. Did you hear him? She put as an act of faith, she sent her names in to us and to other groups. And she's been praying and living for God as a widow. And I thank God. What will God do with us in this 90 days of prayer? You may have to face an impossible situation. You may have to sit in a waiting room with your backslider. You may have to sit in a courtroom. But don't despair, Mama. Don't cry. Don't cry. Begin to declare. Begin to carry some anointing anointing oil with you. Love them as God loves them. They're not lost to God. God knows right where they are. In the name of Jesus, there is faith. Faith has been loosed and released in this on this prayer call. We're going to pray in just a minute, but sister, um, I first want to to give you an opportunity to talk about your blanket ministry because I believe in this. I believe in what Sister Marion is doing. What is God speaking to you? God spoke to Sister Diane Long when Dustin was was out and away from God to fast for 70 days, every day getting up with a different direction from God to fast for that certain day. And Sister Diane, she's going to be coming, Brother Long, Dustin, during this 90 days they will be joining us. But I want you to understand that if God's called you to lead the charge to pray for prodigals and you're not connected to Hope Ministries, please message Donald Long. Donald Long. Get your church signed up. You say, well, I'm not the prayer leader of my church. Well, be the prayer leader for the prodigals. Get a jar. Put your names in there. Step out in acts of faith. Carry anointed prayer cloths with you. Be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. These signs shall follow them that believe. Praise the Lord. So do connect with Sister. Uh, type in Donald Long. Let me see if I can put that in the notes here. Donald Long. Sign up your church. We are in this together. If you don't have uh, some form of prayer at your church, it's time. It's time to get involved. Message her. She will get your church signed up. Join us in this 90 days. We are in a, a tsunami of faith. There is a flood of faith. God has come to infuse us with faith. He has come to inspire us, to cause us to speak to dry bones. Hallelujah. Sister Marion, tell us about your blanket ministry because I think it's important. You can also um, message Marion Wright Trailer. I put her name in Facebook comments. Marion Wright Trailer. Tell us about your blanket ministry. Well, uh, Sister Billie Jean, uh, this started about six years ago. Uh, we had a little girl here in my town that was uh, diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she was sent home from the hospital in Little Rock to die. She even planned her own funeral. And uh, some ladies, we were having a ladies' meeting one night at our church, and a lady came in with a beautiful little homemade quilt that she had made for Courtney. 
all of the ladies gathered around that quilt, we anointed it with oil, and we prayed over that quilt. And um, uh, the next day, I took it to Courtney, and I walked into her house, and it was dark, drear. The whole family was there. There was no hope. That little girl had been given up to die. Her mom and dad were sitting there. It was the most hopeless house I've ever seen in my life. And I walked in there with that prayer blanket. And I said, Courtney, I've got this prayer blanket. We've all prayed over this prayer blanket. And I said, and, and it just came out of my mouth. And I said, and God is going to heal you. And she just grabbed the blanket out of my hand. And she began to put it over herself. And that was six years ago. Today she's cancer free. <laughs> And uh, that's the way it all started. And it's just been one thing after another. We've had a little boy that he was born uh, needing a new heart. They said, pray for God to be able to have a, he can have a heart transplant. Well, he's about two years old now. He got his heart transplant. He's doing really, really good. It's just one thing after another, Sister Billie Jean. I'm telling you, I have never in my life been so excited and this is something, let me tell you, when my husband died, I felt I was the most alone person in the world. And I just hit my knees and I began to tell God, God, I've got to have something to keep me busy. I've got to have something. And God just absolutely opened the door for this prayer blanket ministry. I took it. I ran with it. To me, it's my heart. And uh, I, I just love it. And just I've met people from all over the United States that have called me, that have texted me and messaged me. I've had prayer blankets going everywhere, and I get all kind of good results, and I, I just love it. But I, I love God. You know, it's uh, it's the ministry that God built. And our little card say the ministry that God built, and he takes, he gets all the credit and all the glory for everything that ever happens anywhere around my life. It is God that does it all. I'm just a little piece of dirt, sister. Sister Billie Jean, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a willing vessel, you know. I'm a willing vessel. I tell God, you just tell me what to do, and you tell me where to go, and I'll be there, you know. <laughs> Sister Marion, I just preached about the potential of dirt. That that uh, there was a time in my life I couldn't bring anything to the Lord but an empty basket of dirt. I couldn't bring tithes. I couldn't bring offerings. And the Lord says, bring me your basket of dirt, and I will plant in that basket the seed of possibility. God is calling us. Praise the Lord. I, I want to just, I, I can't get away. From, you know, the preacher in me just thinks of all these scriptures, Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Do yes. we know what dwells in us? Romans 10 and 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that Christ, or excuse me, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for raising the dead, the deadness of sin. Hallelujah. God, I am so fired up. I am so encouraged. Colossians says, We're buried with him in baptism, where also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. Second Timothy says, Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to to my gospel. And this is the one I want us to focus in as we begin to pray. Hebrews 11 and 35. Somebody post this. Hebrews 11, 35. Listen, women receive their dead raised to life again. Women. <laughs> Marion, 2021, received her dead son, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. There is a hope. God is still doing the uh, miraculous. Hallelujah. First Peter, whom by him do believe in God. Do you believe in God? that raised him from the dead and gave him glory. Sister Marion has given him glory that your faith, listen to this, that your faith and your hope might be in God. Where's your hope? Where's your faith? If we have hope in this life, 
only. The Bible says we are of most men miserable. But if we have faith in the God who raises the dead, he is speaking to the dry bones, the dead faith. Your prodigal is dead. That's why they act the way they do. That's why they stink the way they stink. That's why you see grave clothes on them. They're dead in their faith. And Jesus is telling us that he has come to raise the dead. Sister Dawn Starkey testified at the 7 o'clock hour. Please go back and listen to the testimony that her son was dead in his brain, brain hemorrhaging, and God raised him. And she did the same thing. The enemy cannot come against a faithful woman or of God's prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go to the prayer line now. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to do something against my better judgment. But I'm going to keep the prayer line open. And the reason I want to keep it open is because I want our prayers to be heard in the atmosphere. I want the graves to shake. I want the places of hell that have our, our loved ones bound. I want to shake the gates of hell. The gates of hell will not prevail against our constant pounding. And I want us to pray. Brother Larson, are you able to open up your line? Are you with us, Brother Larson? If he's not, that's okay. Hallelujah. Brother Larson, <clears throat> yesterday we, we went into warfare. Usually we don't go into warfare this early in the, uh, our journey. This is our ninth uh, prayers for prodigals. But we went into warfare talking about David and c cutting off the head of the giant. Dead giants can't speak. Bound demons can't speak. Hell cannot raise its voice. If you are filled with praise and worship and the promises of God are in your mouth, hell can't come against you. Hallelujah. Brother Larson, I want you to lead us in a prayer faith that will return our dead back unto us. Women's, women receive their dead raised to life. So that's what I want to happen today. I believe that something's going to transpire as we pray. As the man of God leads us in prayer, we're going to pray together. We're going to keep Facebook live, and we're going to pray that our dead be raised to life again. Brother Larson, will you lead us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not sure if he can uh, unmute his line, Brother Larson. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Larson, we cannot hear you. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We, we uh, ladies, are, we're going to lift our voices, and we're going to let out a war cry. And I am telling you, if you have, if you're in a place where you can cry out with a war cry, I want you to be like the old movies where they said, charge, and the, uh, the army entered into battle with Jesus wrestled death for us. <laughs> he gave us the power and authority to take the offensive, to enter into battle with him. So let's lift our voices. Everybody on Facebook Live, send up hearts as you're crying out to the Lord with a war cry. We are declaring war over the enemy that has our, our sons and daughters bound. We're declaring war over death. We are declaring war over addiction. We are declaring war over unbelief and deception and spirits of rebellion. We're going to declare war. Let's do it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we lift up our voices in the powerful name of the Lord. We cry out, God. We cry out, Lord God. Send deliverance, Lord. You are the deliverer, Lord God. You are the mighty God. 
We cry out war, O、oh、sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer. Lord, let the delivering hand of God go to our backsliders today. Everyone within the sound of my voice, cry out, cry out, deliver my prodigal. Deliver them to the foot of the cross. Deliver them, God. We stand in authority. We bind addiction. We bind alcoholism. You have no place in our children's bodies. Their bodies belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were dedicated to you, Lord. They were baptized in your name. The trail and scent of the blood is upon our backsliders, Lord. You are married to the backslider. You can save to the uttermost, Lord. We enter into this battle, Lord. Our banner, Lord God, goes before us. You are the victorious one. You are the mighty God. You are the deliverer, Lord. The deliverer has come. He came. Set on the rabate, the robosan the riate. Un romoso rodiate a tu ramaye a tu robosi. Oh God, cast down the enemy, Lord God. God, let the Red Sea come and cover the enemy. Let them be drowned, God. Let God arise. Let every enemy of our families be scattered. God, we speak to dry bones. We speak, oh God, arise, dry bones. Let them come alive. Let their faith and their hunger for you, God. Let them come alive, Lord. Bring our children alive, alive, my son, my son, my boy. Oh, pray, Mama, pray, pray with faith, pray the word of God. Pick up your Bible, march around your house. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, I will pursue after them. I will recover all. There's no pit too deep. There's no prison too strong, no prison bars that God cannot send an angel and bring them out. I ko rabo ko riate la rabo sandriate. I ko rabo sandriate la rabo si. Jesus, arise! Let God arise and let every enemy be scattered. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are full of faith, God. We believe, God, that you're calling us back from the dead, Lord. Our sons and our daughters are coming home, God. Oh, we speak life over them, God. You did it, ya torre, tela ramo sandri asi. Oh, ya tela ramo sonri a la ramo sandro di asi. God, restore them. Restore our prodigals that have returned. Equip them. Empower them. Infuse them with strength. Oh God, amama soroba korate la robosi. God, we humble ourselves before you, Lord. We humble ourselves, Lord. Ikaya da raba sandrosi. Use me, Lord, to pray for others, prodigals. Use my intercession. Use me. Lead me. Guide me. Take me into a place where I can. And speak life over dead bones, God. Let me meet backsliders in the restaurants and in the stores. Let me pray for backsliders in my city and in my church and in my family. God, shake me, Lord. God, blow the trumpet, Lord, in Zion. Blow the trumpet loud. Let there be a call to prayer and intercession, as this world has never known. God, ya Torah Mayasi, loose and release warring angels on the behalf of our. Children, God, the angels of the Lord that encampeth round about those that are heirs of salvation. God, I lift my voice in prayer. I lift my voice in praise. I lift my hands into the hills which cometh my help. For the help for my backslider cometh from you. You when call forth the dead from the grave, Lord. You call forth our backsliders, Lord. We call on the Ayala Ramos and the. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Almighty God, Almighty God, hear our cry, hear our cry, O、oh、God. Let God arise. Hala raba sandu raba korote la robosi. Inada raba sandu yasi. 
Give us our children. Protect our young children, our teenagers, Lord. God, prevent them from backsliding. Prevent them from walking away from their faith. God, let the legacy of faith, God, be strong. Be held in place, Lord. Let our young people, God, enter into revival in this earth, in this latter day, oh God. Let our teenagers arise and worship you in the house of praise. God, let our teenagers strengthen one another, Lord. Let moms and dads be in intercession and be priests and kings of their home. Let there be a family altar, Lord, to preserve and protect, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rejoice not over me, enemy. Hallelujah. Though I sit in the darkness, though my prodigal is in a dark place, he will arise. I declare it. I decree it. Let them arise. Let them arise. Let them hear the voice. God, open up the deaf ears of our backsliders. God, unplug their ears. Open up their understanding. Let them see you, God. Even right now, as we call the names of our children, Lord, to you in prayer. God, let them hear the sound of the voice, the voice of the Lord upon many waters, Lord, the voice of the Lord that spoke the world into existence, the voice of the Lord that spoke to Saul on the road to Damascus. Who art thou, Lord? Let them begin to question, expose their sin, show them the path of righteousness for your name's sake, O oh God. We humble ourselves. We we prepare ourselves, prepare our churches, Lord. Prepare our city, God. I pray for Sister Marion and, and Kevin, Lord. I pray, God, for great revival in Arkansas, Lord, God, at the testimony of her son being raised from the dead. Oh, God, let these Baptist people come to the revelation of the oneness of Jesus Christ. Let them see you, God, through this miracle, Lord. God, with signs and wonders, Lord. Lord, you said signs and wonders, God, would follow those that believe, oh God. God, let it be as in the book of Acts, God. Their women receive their dead, God. Oh, God, we're like Rispa today, God. Fighting back the things, oh God, the birds that would pick at the bones of our prodigal. We fight, Lord, through in the name of Jesus, through intercession, through praise, oh God. Oh, God, revive them, Lord. Revive them, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let the men arise. Brother Larson, I want you to pray for our fathers of backsliders. They struggle so much. These men struggle with their children walking away from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the men, Brother Larson. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind together for every man. God, every husband, Lord, every every man, Lord Jesus, that's been under attack of the enemy. Lord Jesus, we bind the works of the enemy. We bind the works of darkness that has come to try to stifle and hinder what the Lord is trying, what you're trying to do in our men and our churches, Lord God. I pray and I, I, I beckon in the spirit right now. Man of God, arise. I speak to the men right now. Men, arise in the name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus over every priest of their household, Lord God. And that conviction and the power of the Holy Ghost would get a hold of their hearts and their minds to rise up and be what you have called them to be in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I find every spirit of intimidation and every timidity, Lord God, every complacent spirit in the name of Jesus, and I plead the blood over our men, Lord God, that they would rise up and fulfill the calling of God in their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, that you would help them and that you would be with them and that you would strengthen them and that they would rise up and encourage themselves in the Lord just like David when everybody come against him. They, he began to encourage himself. I 
I pray that the men of God would arise and begin to encourage themselves and remember the songs of deliverance and remember what the Lord has already done. And God, that you would quicken our men in their minds. Lord Jesus, they would, that they would be sober and that they would be vigilant and come into your presence, Lord Jesus, with the boldness, a brand new boldness, and a brand new authority in the Holy Ghost. We pray, God, that you would loosen the anointing even right now, God, over every man, God, over partners in prayer, over every prayer group, over every church across this nation and across this world, that the men of God would rise up in the midst of adversity, in the midst of pain, in the midst of lies, in debauchery, in the midst of all of the things of the flesh, that they would rise up in the name of Jesus. Sisters, I need you to lift up your voice with me and pray for these men. Pray for the men of God to rise up and not to be intimidated, not to be intimidated at the things of this world, but plead the blood of Jesus over them. We pray in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood over them right now in the name of the Lord for the strength of the Lord is over our men. Hallelujah, Jesus. The righteousness and the peace of God is over our men. God is bringing men and raising them back up. We decree it. We declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, I pray God for every minister. But God, I pray for every minister's wife. God, that they would be a support to their husband and not just their husband, but Lord, the priest of their home. God, that one another, sister and brother, husband and wife would support one another. Lord, in the ministry, God, in every home, in every family, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be unity amongst brothers and sisters, husbands and wives in every household, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of the Lord. Thank you, God, for our men. Thank you, God, for men that fear you, Lord God, and fear your word, Lord Jesus, with fear and trembling. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Help us all, Lord Jesus, God, to have fear and trembling, Lord God, at your word, so that we can hear the voice and what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Lord Jesus, in this hour to the church. Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Brother Lawson. I'm gonna Jesus dig name. I'm gonna dig in a little deeper and pray pray some scriptures. I'm gonna pray that every idol, every idol be turned over and that they would burn the idols. The men would rise up. Whether it's an idol, I, 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 it may be sports, it may consume them. It may be an idol of television, it may consume them. It may be an idol of, of pornography and addiction, but we're praying for the men of God to arise, those that are full of the Holy Ghost. But we're going to bind the enemy, and we're going to pray for our families. But first, we're going to pray that every idol, anything that replaces God, we're going to pray that those uh, idols, would be turned down. If, if I mute you, there's just a little background noise. Praise the Lord. Lord, God, I pray that they would throw away their idols, our backsliders and our fathers, Lord. You said that you would turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to the father. I pray they would throw away their idols and they would turn to you. I rena renounce all idolatry in the bloodline and I break every curse of idolatry over my family in the name of Jesus. Christ. Lord, I put the names of the idols out of the land, cast out of the city, Lord, cast out of our homes. I will keep my own self from any idol, anything that takes up time and replaces the power and anointing and faith of God you have given me. I abolish the idols in America and around the nations, oh God. Lord, expose all idols as lying vanities, God, according to your word. I renounce all covetousness I will not serve the God of money. I will not serve the God of mammon. Lord,
Lord, the hour is late, oh God. Whatever we do, God, we need to do it quickly, oh God, as you prepare for the return of your bride. God, I pray that Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, fall in the name of Jesus. I'm praying the word of God. Lord, cleanse the pollution of idols from our land, from our families, from our homes, God. God, I sprinkle clean water, Lord, upon my family as a priest, as an intercessor. Cleanse us from all filthiness. Cleanse us from all idols, Lord God. Oh, God, let them that, that go astray after idols, God, be turned back. Turn back to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They will see you high and lifted up, oh God. Let all false gods and idols, including any human spirit, be removed from the lives of our family in the name of Jesus. I will put no other gods. I will put no other gods before me. Hallelujah. If you agree with me, just continue to pray with me. We are in a vein. The battle is the Lord, but we are riding with the Lord. We are pursuing the enemy under the anointing of the Lord. God told David, pursue. He fasted. He prayed. Prayed. His children were lost. He didn't know where they had been taken by the enemy. Their city, their homes had been burned. And all they had left was their army, their might. And they cried out against David. And David put on the ephod. He sought the Lord. He sought the Lord. What should we do? How shall, where are they? And God sent a messenger from the Amakites that was, had become sick and fallen behind. And he told David exactly where they had gone, where the enemy had fled. God is speaking to you. He's showing you what the idols are. He's showing you how to expose them. He's showing us through the anointing of the Lord uh, th that God is showing us strategy to pray. We're not always going to pray and and drive out demons on our calls. But today and yesterday, we are in warfare mode. Make sure that you have the whole yeah. armor of God. You better put on the whole armor, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Your, uh, the, your loins gird about with truth. Truth will set your generation free. Truth will endure to all generations, but you are the one that carries truth in your loins, wrapped around you as the belt of truth. Let your feet be shod, prepared to enter into battle. Peace is a battle. Bring peace to your family. Don't be quarrelsome. Don't be speaking in division. Don't speak gossip. These are lusts of the flesh, pride of life. The gospel shoes are peace. It is telling who Jesus is. It's sharing with a world that is hurting, that God cares for them. Carry a gospel of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. If you have gossiped, if you have brought division, if you are uh, apt to quarreling, ask God to forgive you. We're, we're in battle. We cannot go with filthy garments on. We can't run into battle without weapons. Hallelujah. Pick up the sword of the Spirit today. The sword of the Spirit is praying the Word of God. We're praying the Word of God. And then the shield of faith. What marvelous testimony we have heard. What else do we need to hear? Their dead was raised. The women's dead was raised to life. God saved a backslider in a prison, sent a widow woman with an anointed blanket. And God healed his grief and his woes just within weeks. God is actively at work. Hallelujah. 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 This is an hour. I am tired physically. But I know that God has done something in us today, through us today. We have been on the call for an hour. What eternal impact can an hour of praying intercessors have on the future of our families, the future of our cities? Hallelujah. 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 Let God arise and let every enemy be scattered. Look about your house. Cleanse your house. Cleanse your house. As much as within as possible with you, Ensure that your house 
has no evil thing that is speaking. Shut off. Cut off the head of the giant. Cut it off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We have the internet. We, we have television. I'm not here to talk about holiness. I'm here to talk about warfare. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I will put no other gods before you, O oh Lord. We are in warfare. Hallelujah. Love is our greatest weapon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's given us faith today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, in Acts 10 and 38, I want to remind us something. He went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do. In my name, my name, in my stead, in my authority, in my place, we are ministers of reconciliation. Oh God, we declare today that we're going to strip all power from any spirit that it would oppress my backslider. We rebuke and cast out any spirit of poverty that would oppress our families. We rebuke all spirits of madness and confusion that would attempt to oppress the minds of our children in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, undertake for every intercessor against any oppression, Lord, any oppressors, Lord. Lord, you are our refuge from the oppressor. You've hidden us today in prayer, Lord, from the wicked one. You have covered us under your wings, Lord. I believe the enemy has not had the capability or the, uh, the nearness to even hear us pray. You've covered us with a blood covering. We're in the holy place. Deliver me from the wicked that would oppress us, Lord, from our deadly enemies that would surround us. Deliver me from oppressors that seek after the souls of our children. Break in pieces the oppressor. We rebuke and cast out all spirits of affliction, sorrow, and anything attempting to bring us low in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands, saint of God. You have nothing to be crushed down to the earth for. If you're crushed down, then it's to worship Jesus, to bow yourself to Jesus alone. Don't allow depression and despair or grief crush you. Only be brought down to the feet of Jesus. Let no enemy bring you down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let not the proud oppress us, Lord. Deliver us, O oh Lord. We rule over our oppressors, Lord, as they did, Lord God. And, and we, the, the saints of God came out of Egypt. God is bringing us out right now today. He's done a work. He's bringing some of you intercessors out. You have been slaves in Egypt. I'm not saying that you have not repented. You've not been baptized. But you are believers, but you have been slaves in Egypt. And God is saying, I am bringing you to the Red Sea that you will cross over. As they came out of the Red Sea. This is intercession. I want you to see it. As they came out of the Red Sea and crossed over in dry land, they were healed. As they came out of Egypt on the Passover before they even got to the Red Sea, their ears were opened, their blind eyes were the lame, the elderly were healed as they marched towards the Red Sea. Hallelujah. I'm established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Let me finish this one scripture, brother. Brother Larson, just let me finish this one scripture here. I'm established in righteousness and I am far from oppression. The enemy will not take my inheritance. And you can write that down, Ezekiel 46 and 18. The enemy will not take mine inheritance. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Larson. We're going to attempt to close. I believe that if you have prayed, you prayed, you prayed the prayer for your prodigal because you have great faith. Go ahead, Brother Larson. Amen. This is really what I feel is the same spirit of, of warfare yesterday on the line. And while you were speaking and, and uh, when we closed out yesterday, um, 
you had mentioned something that was very prevalent and very um, much to, to take into consideration. We, we, win our, we win our battles with the help of the Lord, but there's always going to be other attacks. There's going to be other things that the enemy's going to try to do. But we have to have a made-up mind. And the scripture that the Lord gave me is out of Joshua chapter 24, verse 13. It says, And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive, olive yards which ye planted not not do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served yes. on the other side of the flood put and away. in Egypt and serve ye the Lord and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we would, should forsake the Lord to serve other gods for the Lord our God. He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way where we went and among all the people through whom we passed. So whatever battle may come up or whatever battle may arise, it's the Lord that fights our battles. And uh, we, we want to put away and we want to cast down those false uh, idols and those things will try to rise back up in, in, in our lives. We're, we're, we're the, in trying to remember Egypt, but we don't, we don't need to remember Egypt because God has brought us into a new land. He's brought us into the land of Canaan and, and Joshua conquest and, and just totally over and over fought battle after battle after battle. But it was with the battle of AI where uh, the battle was not won because they were sent in the camp. And I believe, Sister Billie Jean, what's going on right now is God is cultivating the ground in our families, in our churches, for a great outpouring of revival for prodigals and sinners alike that are going to be coming back because their floodgates are opening. I feel it so strongly in my spirit, and I am so excited about what the Lord is doing through partners in prayer, through our prayers for prodigals. And, and if you're listening to the sound of my voice, prodigal, we love you, and we're going to continue to stress that out, stress that and say, we love you. Our arms are open. We're ready for you to come back into the Father's house in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. What I'd like to do now, and, and uh, Sister Marion, if you're still on the call, thank you. Uh, thank you for thank your you. powerful testimony. Hallelujah. Uh, there's an urgent prayer request. There's an urgent prayer request that came in. I'm seeing it on Facebook for Reverend James Odo. Uh, pray for our brother Quentin Creme. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our voice for this urgent request. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over Quentin, Lord. God, we pray, O oh God, that you preserve him, surround him with his angels, Lord. Minister to this very need. You know what this need is, God. You know, God, what needs to take place, God. And we stand in authority as men and women of God. We pray and plead your blood over our brother, Lord. God, release an answer, Lord God. Oh, God. God, release help. Send help, Lord. Send help, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, there, there were some that asked me where that scripture was found in Ezekiel 46 and 18. It says, Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression. We were praying against oppression. The prince will not take the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession. 
but he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. What do we possess? We have a treasure in earthen vessel. We have the gift of the Holy Ghost. We carry within our bodies the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are born again believers. We have been called by his name. Our, our possession is our faith. It is our legacy. No prince is going to take our legacy from our sons. Our sons will inherit inherit our faith. Leave a legacy of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I would just like uh, maybe uh, three, three to five people uh, to just give maybe a one-sentence declaration of what today has meant how you've been impacted, or, or a statement of faith. God already knows our backsliders by name. And we will take those names tonight, 7 o'clock. You can dial in this number. We will take the names and pray in particular, I promise. I wanted to do that today, but the Lord had other plans. So I'm going to open the line for maybe three to five of you. Um, and I just want you to declare declare what this testimony that has gone forth and what this message this intercession has meant for your family today go ahead tell us where you are first what state you come from go ahead don't be shy sister elaine where, where are you from elaine I'm from Michigan, and Yay. my word this year is Radical Hope, radical and hope. I have Radical Hope right now for my prodigals. Radical Hope. Somebody else? Hallelujah. What do you want to declare before God today? What has he done for you today? This hour, today. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sis. Tell us where you're from. Uh, this, I'm from California, and I declare... And I just went... I declare deliverance and healing for my, my son. Amen. Both of my sons. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I agree with her, God. The blood is upon Sister Charlene's sons, Lord. The blood has been applied to them in Jesus' name. Somebody else. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. What are you going to declare? Those of you who are on Facebook, put your declaration so God will see it. He made notice of great faith and he recorded it. He took notice of great faith. What is your statement of great faith? Post it in Facebook. Go ahead on the prayer line. I declare, Sister Lily, I declare my son, Prodigal, to be brought back home. Brought back home to Houston. Brought back home to, to your church, to your home. To, brought back home to Jesus. We declare it with you, Sister Lily. We declare it with you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all get ready. Sister Alicia on yes. Facebook, she says, I see my sister, April Granado, saved. Back home. I declare my family healed. My father, now forgive me if I don't say it right, Venancio Charez. Uh, Charlene Cherez, my mother healed and delivered the bounds of wickedness and division that has uh, my family broken. We all are being restored. We all are being restored, serving where we are supposed to be as before, fully restored. We're declaring that. Someone on the prayer call, I'm going to take one or two more. Hallelujah. Declare it. I declare my uh, father to be delivered. 
Sister, Sister Rodriguez, where are you from? From Shreveport, Louisiana. Sister Rodriguez, I want you to declare and call every prodigal from Shreveport. Our son lives there. I want you to declare that every prodigal will be stirred and drawn back to Jesus. Can you do that with me? Yeah, Shreveport. Absolutely. Go ahead. Every prodigal God stir Shreveport, Louisiana, north, south, yeah, east, and west of that city of Shreveport, Louisiana. We call, we speak to the dry bones. Find them, Lord. Search for them, Lord. As the shepherd that left the 99 to follow the one lost sheep in Shreveport. We're praying specifically, Lord. Revival of the churches, ready to receive backsliders, Lord. Souls born again of the water and the spirit in Shreveport, Louisiana. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> praise God. Let it be so, Lord. Everybody say amen. 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 Sister Stephanie Craig, she says, I declare that my nephew Sean will surrender to the will of God over his life. We declare it with you. Sister Dora on Facebook says, I declare that every prodigal will return uh, uh, back to the fold. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister Janet Harvey says, I declare the demon spirits no longer bind the minds of our loved ones. They will declare that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Houston, Texas. Oh, God's doing a great work in Houston, Texas. Sister Donna says, I declare Christopher is delivered from alcoholism and drug addiction. I declare he's saved and forever changed. Sister Cheryl says, I pray my son will be fully restored in Christ. Sister Sandy says, I declare in faith that all my prodigals will come back to the Lord with a repented heart. Sister Joyce says, I agree wholeheartedly in declaring every prodigal in Vineland, New Jersey to return to God. Why not? Sister Sandra says, I declare freedom of my prodigals. I declare the chains will be broken. I declare this in the name of Jesus. Sister Vicki says, Jesus is going before me and all of us mightily into battle. He is victorious, and I will. Uh, I am far from oppression in the name of Jesus. God is yanking my children <laughs> out from the devil's hands. Hallelujah. Out of the darkness. Praise God. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Sister uh, Cain says, I'm from the Philippines. I declare that my husband may accept Jesus as his Savior. And everybody say, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sister Michelle Hurd says, I declare deliverance for my son. Sister Michelle Boudreau says, there's no place like home. Back in the church, in the house of God, with the family of God. Hallelujah. The, I, can't, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Sister uh, Michelle, but the Mizpah in Hebrew. Hallelujah. I declare revival in California. I declare revival over my city of Leesville and Fort Polk, Louisiana. God, if there's a backslider amongst the soldiers on Fort Polk, let me find them. Let my husband be sent to them in the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, Sister Vicky says, all of Puerto Rico, come on, Puerto Rico, let the dead in Christ, let those that have died in their faith arise to new life, become new creatures in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Y'all, you're, you're continuing to post these declarations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I, I'm encouraging you, if you're home... I want you just to go to, I've said this this morning about three or four times, but I'm going to go do it right now. I'm going to walk to my front door, and I'm going to carry my phone with me, and I'm going to open the door, and I'm going to call my prodigal's names to the Lord. Come back to the doorposts that are covered with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I declare today in the name of Jesus that my children, Jonathan and Jason and Alex, Lord God, Justin, oh God, Bree, Reuben, Kendra, Lord God, Ben, 
Oh, God, for Bella, Lord God, I throw open the door of my house. I look God, into I the street. Son, I call God, them God, from the Mary, north, south, and east and west. Jesus, arise, God. let your faith arise for Heather. God, Heather was baptized in your name. Oh, God, call her. I call her, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I call her, Lord God. Oh, God, let my Jason, my firstborn, Lord, know you, God. Know you in, in your love, God. Let Kiri, God, come to the born again experience, Lord. I speak Speak over my children, Lord God. Let the blood of the Lamb, God, pursue the scent. Their covenant seed, they're my seed. Their arrows in my quiver, God. I plead your blood that my grandchildren, while they're young, they're going to choose to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Perhaps you were not at home and you couldn't throw open the door. Perhaps you're at work. Just find a window. Look out somewhere. Broaden your faith. Broaden your faith. Look up to the sky who created the heavens and the earth and declare, my children are coming back to the Father's house. Hallelujah. God bless you. I will read all the other posts. Thank you, Brother Larson, for praying with me. Um, this is our fast day for those that are on the Partners in Prayer team. And we're praying for the will of the Father. And it is the will of the Father that all should be saved and come to repentance. God bless you. Thank you. We've had a great turnout today. Please do something. If you have faith, I want you to hit that share button. If you have faith, I want you to share what has been said, what's been testified. If you have faith in God, take just one moment. Share this. Somebody needs to hear this word. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. Perhaps a backslider will listen to this word. Perhaps he will listen, she will listen, and nobody will be around, but God draws them to this word today. God is able to save you. He's waiting for you. He has a place for you. The church is not the same church that you left. We are full of compassion. We are believing God to restore you. We are believing God to renew you. He's never taken his gift from you. Just bow yourself before the Lord. Call upon the name of Jesus and let God lead you back into fellowship with him. And I declare it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everyone. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will have another Prayers for Prodigals with Sister Sherry Parrott. Not every call is exactly the same. Tonight at 7 o'clock, this is Tuesday, April the 6th, will be uh, prayer time. Uh, and 8 o'clock also with new prayer leaders. Um, post in these comments uh, your prayer requests. If you're comfortable in posting your children's names, we will take them. We have a jar at, at where we attend church at Hope Springs. And we will write down your children's names. And you can also email me. Uh, please, if you're a prayer leader, please listen. If you're, if you're a prayer coordinator, please message Donald, D-O-N-A-L-D, Long. Please message them. Tell them you would like to involve your prayer group. They're organizing the prayer groups and the churches. And let's come together in the power of unity. God bless you.